So do Canadians need to know more about how this massive $186 billion infrastructure program has been operated and what exactly has been happening with the funding? Let's bring in three members of Parliament to talk about that. Halifax Liberal MP Andy Fillmore is the Parliamentary Secretary to the Minister of uh, Infrastructure. Edmonton Conservative MP James Cumming is the Small Business and Export Promotion Critic for the Official Opposition. And British Columbia New Democrat MP Taylor Backrack is the Infrastructure Critic for the NDP. Good to see you all. Uh, let me start with you, Mr. Cummings, since this is uh, your party's motion. Why do you want the Auditor General to investigate the government's infrastructure program? Well, it, it's clear to us after looking at the reports from the Parliamentary Budget Officer that uh, the Liberals put forward a program that they're supposed to be accountable to three, three main planks within, and, and it was that they would put out an infrastructure program that would um, increase economic activity, so an increase in GDP, uh, that it would increase productivity, um, and there would also be some a decrease in uh, greenhouse gas emissions. So the, the parliamentary budget officer has, has said that um, they, there's no outcomes, there's no accountability on those outcomes. The spending isn't what they said it would be, and uh, it's come out a lot slower, and it's really an issue around the accountability of the spending. So what they've done is they've got this spending sp uh, over a variety of different departments, uh, a bunch of different activities, and it's really hard to determine right. so exactly what, what's what the, the spending is. What's the, what, what, are you, what's the, what, what, are you, what are you trying to get to? I mean, uh, it, it, is the suggestion here that uh, something else is being done with the money or it's just not being managed as efficiently as it should be? Well, I think it's a combination of things. So if we don't know how it's being spent, we don't know what's left to be spent or, or how it's going to be spent. But most important for the taxpayers is to understand if you're going to take uh, borrow money and you're going to put it into infrastructure spending and you say that you're going to use it for very specific tax, then you should be able to demonstrate okay. that you're getting the outcome. So that, to me, is the fundamental issue here, is that right. we should be able to see what the outcomes are, and the Auditor General should be able to produce a report on that. All right, Mr. Fillmore, uh, the, the, your, your government has talked a lot about transparency and the need to uh, open up uh, the process so Canadians can see it. So will, will Liberals support this motion calling for this official examination of your government's infrastructure program by the Auditor General? So the substance of the motion is really about inviting the Auditor General to take a look at the program, and we entirely welcome that. I mean, the Auditor General is going to do what he, he's going to do. It's his, it's his mandate. He doesn't need the permission or the, or the, uh, or the urging of, of the House of Commons to do that. Uh, welcome that entirely. Uh, our objection is not to the substance of the, of the motion. Uh, it's one of those little trapdoor motions. So in the preamble, it talks about uh, how in a, in a uh, March 2018 report from the PBO, there were found to be some shortcomings that didn't allow him to do his reporting. Uh, what the motion doesn't uh, reflect is that the uh, parliamentary budget officer then approached the party, said, here are the gaps, can you give us the information? We did. Uh, he then uh, released a, an August 2018 updated report uh, and said, this is exactly what I needed. Um, we can see now that the Liberal government is delivering on its historic plan uh, to, uh, to improve infrastructure and communities, create jobs, grow the economy, and increase GDP, and all those things have, in fact, right, happened. But we, we just heard from the parliamentary budget officer. We talked to him again today, and here's what he told us. We just uh, ran the clip for our audience here. We found a high number of lapses, which was money that was being allocated, but which was not being spent. We found that there was about a 40% lapse rate, which is quite significant when you're talking about billions of dollars a year. Uh, that's what he said. Yeah, so the uh, spending intentions of municipalities and provinces, we find that there is a gap between their intention and their actual ability to invest that money. Now, we can only uh, spend the money on the provinces and municipalities as quickly as they can invest it. Mm -hmm. So there are times, and we, I experienced it in my own riding of Halifax, where we're, we're ready to get the money across the, uh, the finish line, but the tendering processes, the, the internal ap approval processes between the uh, municipalities and the provinces, uh, as, as uh, described in the bilateral, Agreements right. I mean, haven't run their course yet. And you, you and other, I'm not sure I heard you say it specifically, but others in your government have lamented uh, the fact in the past, uh, suggesting that, look, we, the money is sitting there, provinces aren't uh, stepping up to the plate to claim it. So uh, leave that for what it is. And Mr. Backrack, what, what's your view here? Will, will the NDP support this motion? I, I think we will. You know, at a high level, Canadians deserve to know that these vast sums of money are going to build 
the infrastructure that communities and Canadians need, uh, not line the bank accounts of private investment companies. And there are, are plenty of, of issues, and I think uh, both of these gentlemen would agree that this fund has not exactly rolled out in a, in a smooth way. There have been delays, there have been funds that weren't accounted for, the PBO has had a difficult time getting documents, and I think Canadians deserve to know exactly uh, how these funds have been, have been allocated, uh, what the gaps are, what the delays are attributable to, and, uh, and that they're meeting the goals of the program. You know, one of the goals that, uh, that I certainly want to see uh, acted on is the reduction of climate pollution. Mm -hmm. And one thing we, we would hope that would come out of an audit like this is some sense of whether that goal is being achieved with the investments that are being committed to. Right, but are you concerned, you're concerned about where the money's actually going or just that the money's not getting out the door uh, quickly enough? Uh, you know, as we've chatted about a little bit here, uh, it can only go out as fast as municipalities and provinces and, and other organizations can use it. Sure, well that's really the, the responsibility of the federal government is to find a way to ensure that the dollars uh, get to the projects and that those projects get built. Um, I, I think part of the, the motion certainly deals with uh, the second question, which is, uh, are the funds that have been committed and allocated, are they meeting the stated goals of the program? And I think that's uh, one of the really important questions. And as I said, when it comes to reducing climate pollution, we need to know if all of these different commitments and the assessment process that looks at the, the different proposals, whether those add up to significant reductions in, in climate pollution. Um, hopefully, uh, an audit like this can get to the bottom of that. Okay, so if you go to Infrastructure Canada's uh, site, I think you see a, there's a project map there, and, and, and Infrastructure Canada's data shows, uh, taking this off uh, Canadian press report today, uh, Mr. Cumming, more than 52,000 projects have been approved across many dozens of programs, worth more than $57.5 billion in federal funding. Of those, 38,810 projects are underway, and federal coffers have paid out nearly $22.7 billion for them. Uh, what do those numbers say to you? Well, it, it says that there's spending that's happening, but it comes back to the premise of the, the way this program was designed. Are all of those projects going to increase productivity? Are they, are they having the economic impact that the Liberals said it would? And, and uh, does it have any p impact on green, greenhouse gas emissions? So that's what we're really trying to dig into. Are these projects that have been thought through that they, if, if I was going to put out funding, you would certainly ask the proponent of the funding to say, here are our objectives, and you need to apply on the basis that you will fulfill these objectives. So now that you've asked the question and you've mm. given them the money, you certainly should follow up to see are they hitting the goalposts that they said they would within that Okay, funding? Mr. Filmer, are, are all those projects hitting those goalposts? Well, I, I would say this. First of all, the criteria in, in the spirit of open and transparent government, the criteria for all of the projects and all the buckets of, of money within those funds are available on the infrastructure website. And how we're spending the money is all available on the open government portal. So the, uh, we have to make sure that the outcomes are being measured. If we can't measure the outcome of a project, then we need to think about that for sure. And better is always possible. Uh, but right now, we're having a tremendous impact on Canadian communities. Peter, look, there has not been a, a plan to invest in communities in North America since Franklin Delano Roosevelt and the New Deal of more than 80 years ago. This is extremely complex, ambitious, change-making work, and we are working hard to get it right. And okay, it's two, two, huge two things for you. Let's, let me come back. So based on, let me just circle back to the first question I asked you about supporting this motion. So I gather because of the preamble, you won't support it, but it sounds like the opposition parties will. So this will happen if the opposition parties agree to have the Auditor General look into this, correct? If the motion passes, yeah. it'll happen, and it may happen anyway, because of course it's the prerogative of the of the Auditor General. And we honestly, we would welcome as many eyeballs on our work as we can. The more that people can learn about it and know about it, and the more we have opportunities to make it better and better day over day, we're, we're, we welcome. Okay, that. so is there is there where's the evidence that the infrastructure money, uh, wh whatever's flown out the door at this point, is meeting all those goalposts that Mr. Cumming talked about? Is there something you can point us to that says, look? Go here, you'll see how we've, we, this is what, the, these are the three pillars of the program when it was launched. Here's how it's meeting all those pillars. 
So in May of 2019, after the program had been up for a few years, the Infrastructure Canada released a, an update report showing the progress toward goals and also on how we're spending that money and how much of it remains and how much of it has gone out the door. I expect that to be a, a regular occurrence, those update reports, and that kind of thing will keep on going. So that's one way we can measure and right, see But the at impact. $186 billion, would, would you welcome an outside uh, investigation as done, would be done by the Auditor General? I know he, he can do it if he wants to do it. Uh, you've pointed that out. Uh, Absolutely. Would you be, be happy to have that so all Canadians can see, look, here's a value for money proposition. As I said at the beginning, very happy to have that happen and, and maybe it will even improve the way we're, we're rolling it out. I, that would be wonderful if we could do an even better job than we already are. What we don't like is the deliberate mischaracterization of a stale report, one that has been superseded uh, in the preamble of the motion. The, that makes the motion untenable and frankly it's misleading to Canadians. All right, Mr. Cumming, uh, let, me, let me hear you on... Uh, you know, how, what, what do you think happens next in the process? Sounds like the motion will pass uh, if all the opposition parties support it. And from what I heard in the House today, it sounds like they will. Um, then what? Well, it, it's interesting to say that this is all about transparency. So if it was about transparency, then we wouldn't have reports from the parliamentary budget officer that are, that are critical of the transparency of this government on their outcomes. So I really had no choice but to look to a motion to get the Auditor in General involved. So I suspect it will pass and that hopefully within a year from now that we'll see a report and we'll be able to dig in to see is this an efficient use of taxpayers' dollars? Are we getting the outcomes that we're supposed to get? And, and, and hold uh, this government to account. That's what we're here to do. All right, Mr. Backrack, let me give you a final, uh, final comment here. Yeah, so it's tremendously complex, and in many ways we only have one chance to do this right as a country. This is, a, a, like I said, a vast uh, sum of financial resources, and we need to ensure that it's building the infrastructure uh, that we need, that communities across the country need, and that it's meeting the stated goals of the program. And I think having an independent view of the efficiency and the efficacy of the program is really important. And, and to my read, that's what this, this motion and hopefully the audit that it, it results in will create. All right, gentlemen, thank you all for your time tonight. Uh, we'll follow the story much. and we'll uh, uh, update it uh, as warranted. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you.